see how words and terms and symbols are used and the powers that be in this world have set up a world of symbols and emblems and terms and catchphrases once you understand how this system works for the first time the world opens up to you all of it is right in front of you but if you don't understand what the words are and what the words mean you're never going to figure out how this stuff works there's a very sinister frightening interesting symbolism that has been imposed upon this country and the people have no idea in the world what's going on and I will guarantee you no matter how educated you might think you are I will guarantee you you have no idea in the world how the world actually works you need to understand that when even on your check when you're writing a check the place where you put your name on a check look at that line what you're signing on and get a magnifying glass and you will find that's not a solid line to sign your name on that is written it's a type written sentence that's been honed down to microscopic size get a magnifying glass and read on a check what what is said where you sign your name one of the most interesting symbols in Druidism was a magic wand magic wands were always made out of the wood of a holly tree made out of Hollywood and we're still seeing the magic of the wood of the holly tree Hollywood Hollywood, motion pictures, television. I have discovered many years ago that words and magical systems dominate the world that we live in. There is, in point of fact, a magical matrix at work. I've always been interested in the occult. Occult is simply a word meaning hidden. And so much of our powers in this world and the way things work are, are hidden. And uh, the more one looks at this subject of how the world actually works, you begin to see that there's a magical system. And I'm telling you, there really is a magical system dominating the world of the Western civilization. And for a thousand years before the Roman Empire existed in Northern Europe, basically Western Europe, um, there was a magical priesthood called the Druids and the Druids still even exist to this day and it was a very legitimate political social uh, educational religious institution dominating Europe for thousands of years and they were referred to as the Druids they were actually from the Phoenician Canaanite system in the Middle East. The Phoenician Canaanites formed the basis for the ancient Druidic system, and that's even older. But in the ancient Druidic system, there were many powerful symbols and emblems. One of the most interesting symbols in Druidism was a magic wand, like Merlin, a magician with his magic wand. Magic wands were always made out of the wood of a holly tree. It was made out of Hollywood, and we're still seeing the magic of the wood of the holly tree. Hollywood, motion pictures, television. And once you begin to see the symbols and realize that the symbols for the national coats of arms for countries, the flags, the seals, the presidential seals, the emblems for the logos and emblems on corporate uh, corporations, especially the, uh, the, the corporate emblems for motion pictures and television companies like Columbia Broadcasting System, CBS has the eye. The Colombian uh, system goes back to the Colombian faction of the Illuminati back in the early 1700s, not the late 1700s. And you begin to see why Space Shuttle is called Columbia. You have Columbia University, Columbia uh, Pictures, Columbia Broadcasting. Columbia is a very interesting word, and, and it's connected to the Jesuits. Once you begin to see how words and terms and symbols are used, and of course symbols are extraordinarily important in world affairs, 
all of a sudden it opens up, as I said, a whole new perspective on how stuff is happening. Let me give you an example of how words, uh, my friend uh, uh, William Henry says you put an S in front of the word word and it becomes swords. The words are swords, they are cutting things, they, people are, humans are word responsive creatures, we respond to people's words. When you begin to see how words are used, let me give you an example of the magic. Why do you have to go to court? You go to court because you play basketball on a court. You play tennis on a court. How do you play tennis on a court? You play with a racket. Why? Because the people that develop it know it's a racket. That's where we get the term. Consequently, you need to understand that the words which are used by the systems under which we live are not by chance. In a court, the whole idea in a court is to put the ball back in the other guy's court. So this team of attorneys, they stand up and throw the ball back at the other team. Now the ball's in their court. They have to get up and throw the ball back into that court. The judge, the judge wears a black robe. Why does a judge wear a black robe? Well, the same reason Catholic priests wear black robes. Rabbis wear black robes. You wear a black robe. For many years, uh, young, uh, young people graduating from university and college wear a black robe. What's this stuff with a black robe? Let me give you an ex example of how this stuff works, and it's a very quick example. There are two basic kinds of law under the law of magic. There are two kinds of laws that govern the earth. One is called the law of the land, L-A-N-D. And we've heard that term, law of the land. Why do you use that term, the law of the land? Because that's where people live is on land. But there's an opposing law which is far more important, far, far more powerful. It is called the law of water. It was developed under the old Druidic system in Europe, which can trace its history back to the Roman Empire through the Vatican, and ultimately back to the Phoenician Canaanites in the Middle East of what we today call uh, Phoenicia, Cana, was called back uh, what we call today Israel and Lebanon, Syria. That was called Phoenicia, Cana. And the Phoenician Canaanites, the very word Cana, which we've all heard in relation to the Bible, Cana uh, is a Phoenician word meaning bankers, merchant bankers. Well, the Phoenician Canaanites set up a system of merchant banking and had their Phoenician Canaanite symbols and words connected to their societies, their banking societies. We're talking about in the Middle, in the Middle East and then through the Greece and ultimately through Rome and then into Britannia and ultimately into this country comes an ancient Druidic Phoenician Canaanite magical system of finance, education, and all of it is right in front of you. But if you don't understand what the words are and what the words mean, you're never going to figure out how uh, this stuff works. We all have a cursory understanding of what we think is going on. That's not it. You need to understand that when even on your check, when you're writing a check, the place where you put your name on a check, look at that line, what you're signing on, and get a magnifying glass, and you will find that's not a, a solid line to sign your name on. That is written. It's a typed, written sentence that's been uh, honed down to microscopic size. Get a magnifying glass and read on a check what, what is said, where you sign your name. That's why the attorneys tell you, you better check the small print. The small print is ultra small. Where you sign your name on a check is saying something. Go back and read it. You need to understand that according to the old Phoenician Canaanite system, which we call today our judicial education on judicial system, there is no law in this country or in the Western world no law, federal, state, county, city, commercial, it makes no difference. There is no law on the books anywhere in this country that applies to you as an individual creature. There is no law because the people who designed the system thousands of years ago realized that there's two of you. There's the one that your mother gave birth to that God created, so to speak, and even your mother didn't know what you were doing. 
Even your father and your mother have no idea what you're thinking or what you will do. You don't even know. So consequently, they have no control over you, your flesh and blood self. But somebody has to control this show. And so consequently, the ancient Phoenician Canaanites developed a, new, a system by which they would assign to every person a second you. And this is the way it works in America. There is two of you. Just as there are two states in this country, of every state is two states. You have the state of Nevada and Nevada State. You have Cal State, California State, and state of California. Not the same thing at all. California State, according to the law, is one thing. State of California is totally different. It has nothing to do with each other at all. It's the difference between being a lawyer and an attorney has nothing to do with them at all. It's totally separate words, means totally separate things. Consequently, when you understand how words and terms are used and symbols are used, then we go back to the idea of the court. And as I said, there is no law in this country on any books that applies to you. None. All law in the Western civilization applies only to cooperations, co-ops. All law applies only to corporations, period, across the board, no other no, uh, end of sentence. Consequently, there is no law that applies to you personally, so consequently, the system has made each one of you a corporation. And how, how now do you distinguish which one, uh, when someone's addressing you, that they're addressing you as the one that your mother gave birth to, or the corporate you. Very simple. According to British law, when you sign your name, upper and lower case, that is applying to your body. Your, your flesh and blood self is spelled, according to British and American law, upper and lower case, capital letter, lower case. That's you, your personal self. There is no law that can be applied to an upper and lowercase name, period. No law at all can be applied to an upper and lowercase name because there is no law over you. Therefore, every piece of important bills, insurance, driver's license, identification, uh, taxes, I don't care what it is. If it's a piece of business, period in any kind of way, shape, or form. Your name must, by law, international maritime admiralty banking law, your name must appear in all capital letters. You will never get a bill or anything that has your name upper and lower case because there is no law that applies to an upper and lower case name, period. So if Sears is gonna send you a bill you go into uh, Baskin Robbins or Sears and, and you order a pair of shoes, what are you going to do? They're going to give you a ticket and you're going to put it on your bill and then they're expecting you to pay the bill. And consequently, they're going to charge you. Well, that's the same thing. You go into a courtroom. They're going to read out the charges and the cop gave you the ticket and you have been charged with uh, speeding or whatever and therefore you have to pay the charge. Well, once you understand that in America, according to our laws in America, you cannot pay a bill. Did you know that? According to international banking law, Americans cannot pay a bill. So when you say, well, I gotta pay this, I'll pay that bill. Well, that's a term that we use, but in point of fact, lawfully, you cannot pay a bill. You can discharge a debt you cannot pay a bill. So consequently, you need to understand what do you mean discharge a debt? Now it gets back to the court again. Now it gets back to the symbols and emblems of why the judge wears a black robe. It has to do with the planet Saturn. Saturn is the god that inhibits. He's the inhibitor and the law, the law god, the god of law who inhibits, who holds back. He holds back everything. It teaches you a lesson the hard way. Saturn. 
And women were told in the ancient world to listen to their god, Saturn, who incidentally was called Lord of the Rings. Okay? And consequently, they're still making movies in Hollywood on Lord of the Rings, the planet Saturn. Women were told to listen to their god, the Lord of the Rings, so they were wearing ear, an ear ring. Men were to get married before Saturn, their god, so they would wear a wedding ring. Consequently, the king would be crowned before Saturn. Saturn would be the round crown or the corona, the ring. Saturn, the god who is the inhibitor, the god of occult law, the mystical god Saturn, Lord of the Rings, who is in charge of and, and controls all occult law in the universe. This is why today um, we know that Saturn was referred to as L, E-L. L is a name that was given to the planet Saturn. And therefore, if you are worshiping Saturn, you represent the law, you are referred to in church today as an elder. How did you get to be an elder? You got to be an elder because you were one of the elites. How did you get to be an elite? You got elected. Because through elections, all of our system is based on occult, mystical words and terms going back to the planet Saturn going back to the Phoenician Canaanite system of banking. Incidentally, where, where do you find a bank? We go to banks all the time. Where do you find a bank? Banks are on both sides of a river. They're called river banks. What does a river bank do? It directs the flow of the current sea. Your money is referred to as the current sea. This is why when you go to court, you have the current electricity because it's the juice and if you don't have the juice you don't have it so if you don't have the juice you can't capitalize and the capital is a latin word meaning money there's a very sinister frightening interesting symbolism that has been imposed upon this country and the people have no idea in the world what's going on. All goes back to the Phoenician Canaanite system and ancient Phoenicia, ancient Babylonian Sumeria. And this is why the work of Zechariah Sitchin is so important. This is where the kings of England get their concept of the divine right of kings. What are you talking about divine right? All of this is part of a subject which I call ancient mysticism that dominates the Western